Webinars are an excellent way of providing real value to your audience so they keep coming back for more. However, for it to be successful, you need to have a smooth registration process that encourages people to register for your webinar and attend your presentation. I will show you how to create a webinar registration page that helps to skyrocket your viewers. So let's go ahead right now and actually create a webinar registration page in WordPress. We'll be using Seedprod, the number one landing page builder for WordPress with over 1 million users. Seedprod is a drag and drop page editor that makes creating pages quick and easy for everyone. Please subscribe to the channel for more tutorials and to learn how Seedprod can help create amazing landing pages for you. So the first thing that we want to do is come to your WordPress dashboard and we need to install Seedprod. So you can head over to seedprod.com or click the link in the description. You're going to click the big orange button here on the right and you're going to grab a pro license. In this video, we're going to be using the pro license of Seedprod. Once you have an account, we're going to click on login. On the left hand side, you can enter your email address and your password and then click login. Inside the Seed Prod dashboard, we're going to click the Downloads tab, and we're going to click the big orange button here to download the Pro version. We can also grab the license key here by clicking the icon, and this will copy it. And we can close this tab for now. We don't need this anymore. Next, we're going to come over to Plugins and Add New, and Upload Plugin. And here you can choose the file off your hard drive that we just, just downloaded, or you can drag and drop this file right here and click Install Now. Next, we want to click on Activate Plugin, and here we can paste in our license key click a ver verify key and if everything went well you should see a green success message you can close this tab in your browser for now next we want to go to pages on the seed prod section in the menu and you'll see different modes here uh, what we want to look at is landing pages and we want to create a new landing page this is for our webinar seed is going to ask you to choose a new page template and you can filter these by type you can create one from scratch using the blank template we're going to filter these by webinar you can preview these by clicking the magnifying glass and you, this is the desktop version. You can check out the mobile version as well if you wish. So you just find one that you enjoy and you think would be good for your page and click the check mark here and then give your page a name. I'm just going to call mine webinar. You can call it whatever you wish and save and start editing the page. And here you'll be presented with the Cprod visual editor. On the right hand side, you'll see the template that we just imported, which looks great out of the box. The first thing that you want to do is edit the content of your page. The first thing is the content, and then we'll change the design up with the colors and the fonts. So we would just go from top to bottom, just pick the first block, and we would update the text here, or if it's an image, you could update the image. So whatever your webinar is going to be about, make sure you have a nice catchy headline for it. So all right, change this to Top Secrets Revealed by YouTube Professionals. You can change that to whatever you wish. And you can align this if you want, and we can change the size of that. So I could put it on one line, or I could make it really big and make it stand out if I like. I'm going to do that. I'm going to make it stand out a little bit. The next is the date here of the actual webinar. So you could change this to whatever it is. Or you could re remove that completely. We have a countdown timer here. This is the block settings. And the default time is quite a while ago. So I'm just going to remove that. And I'll select a date from, let's say, next Friday next week. And you can see how that is updated from seven days until now. You can also pick the time. So eight in the morning or noon or wherever you wish. I'll just leave that blank for now. Your time zone, and you can align this if you want. You can change the size of it. So if you want small or medium or large, and you can show a message. So sorry, you were too late. So after the countdown has reached zero, it'll show this message here. You also notice that on certain blocks that when you click on them, it'll have a template section. So the headline doesn't have one because there's not many styles that you can do with that other than the colors and maybe some shadowing. But the countdown, we can click on templates and see different versions of it. So you don't have to go through and make them yourself. You can just pick one here that you like instantly. And that works with quite a few of the blocks. So the images, for example, too, they also have a template section where they would add maybe a shadow around it or a border or something else. To get back to the blocks, we have this little tab here, the blocks icon, which will bring us back. So again, you would just come up, start from the top of your page and work your way down and update your pictures. So I'll click here and hit the trash can. You can use your own image and upload that and that'll be in your media library here. Or you can use a stock photo. So I can just search for something like YouTube and click search. And for this picture, I'll just click a random one. It doesn't really matter. I would edit my list, maybe change the text on my buttons. And here we have a, a speaker section. So the same thing, just update their pictures, update the text, their names, and their titles. We also have a video here. So video blocks are very cool. 
We click on the block settings and we have the type selected to YouTube. So you would just paste the URL to your video. And if you want to use it from somewhere else, you can click custom and just paste that custom video code in here. So if we switch back to YouTube, we can come back and play with the width if you want that a little bigger or wider. And you can align that as well if you like. There's also advanced tab here. And this is usually some type of styling and spacing for that specific block. So if you want some top margin there, you can do that easily. And let's come down and we have the footer here as well, where you would just update the picture and any of the text that you want to change. Now let's go back out to the top. And now we want to actually change the design of the page, the feel of it and the colors. So this is a background image for this section. So we can click here and we can see a background image was selected. We can just instantly delete that. And now what we're seeing is this blue color from the background color. This is solid. So we could just pick a different one and whatever you wanted to pick that makes sense. So YouTube is red, that is extremely red, but you could also do a gradient. So you could pick your first color. So maybe like a dark red and then maybe something a little bit lighter. And then you could slide the angle here. So you could decide where the dark red is, where, where the light is and what the best angle for that would be. Again, if you wanted to use an image, you could just use a stock image and do a search. Or again, you could upload your own version of it. All right, now that we have some red colors that look more like a YouTube feel, we can come down. And it's hard to tell, but this text actually looks like it's a dark blue. And that is being pulled in from our global colors. So if we come down bottom left corner here, you'll see global settings and we have global settings for our fonts, colors, background, and we can add some custom CSS if we like. So under fonts, I'm going to scroll up here so we can see this better. We have the header font and the body font. So if I just pick a random font here, you can see that all of our headers have updated to this new font. The same with our body text. If I just pick a random one, you can see that that changed here as well. Now, if you're not very good at picking fonts, we do have some pre-selected font combinations. So you can just click the font themes, come down and you can pick one that looks good to you. And now that'll update instantly on the page. So all of my fonts for my headers and my body have been updated. You can now do the same thing with colors. So this is the current theme that we have. So you can see that there is a slight blue color here and then a slate gray. So if you look closely, that is that same blue color. So if I click, you can change this and the text, you could change that here as well. You can see it was updated instantly. Our buttons are yellow. So if I change this to something different, you can see that that updates all of the buttons on the page because they're being called in from the global settings. And same thing with the links and the backgrounds. Now, again, if you're not great with picking the colors, you could go to your color palettes here and we have some pre-selected color palettes that you can just easily click on one and that'll update on your page. So let's go with something maybe kind of YouTube feeling. Um, I'm actually gonna go with the yellow. I think that looks pretty good. We got the black, we got the gray and the yellow buttons do look pretty good with the red here. And lastly, there is a background and this is the background behind all of the sections. And it's the same type of idea. You can select a solid color, a gradient or add an image. So let's come down all the way to the bottom and I'm just going to make some quick changes here. We can see that this section wasn't updated. So if I click the background here, we can clear this and it's just going to use the default background color or we can select our own. So I'm going to select maybe something a little bit darker that goes with the YouTube colors. And we have the section here and you can see that there's two columns. See the cog wheel here. And there's a column cogwheel here. So if I click on this one, I can change the background and maybe we could do something dark red. And then the one on the right could be a red as well, but maybe just a little bit different. So I would definitely spend more time on this. I'm just giving you a basic example, but I would definitely try to make this look a little bit nicer. I'm just trying to show you how flexible Seaprod actually can be. Really your imagination is your only limit here. So right now we have these buttons and we don't really have anywhere to link them to. So the idea is we want to have people sign up to our webinar. So what we could do is actually replace this. And now we actually have multiple options here. We could link to a third party form where this, these buttons will just link to another place where you could have them fill out a form and collect their information that way. You could collect it through your opt-in form here, and this will collect their email and their name. And maybe this is all you need to have them to sign up to your webinar. And another option would be to use the contact form. So if I drag this over here, you can see it's going to ask you to install contact form plugin, which is WP forms, which works great with seed Prod, And we highly recommend that you do consider using it. So for now, I'm just going to delete the opt-in form here and let's install WP forms. I just want to show you how quick and easy this is.
And there we go. Just after a few seconds, it has installed the plugin. We didn't have to go back to the WordPress dashboard. It's already completed. And on the left-hand side, we can select a form, but we haven't created any yet. So we can click New Form, and this will actually open WP Forms in a new window over SeedProd. So now you can read about it if you wish. And now there is a pro version of WP Forms, and I highly, highly recommend that you check it out. It has so many great features. Now to create your first form, we're just going to click the button here. And we'll give our form a name. So I'll just say webinar sign up and then select a template. Let's just create a blank form. And here on the left, we can select our field. So we want the name field. So this is their first name and their last name. And now you can click on this and it'll update on the left hand side, similar to seed prod where you'll have different options that you can update. Now we want to make sure that this is required. We want their first and last name. Now we can come back to the add more fields. And the second form field that we'd want is email. So let's drag that over here. We can click on this and you can update this. We want to make sure that is required as well. And you can enable email confirmation. So they have to put it in twice. I would keep these forms probably as easy as possible, just so you're not overwhelming the user. Let's also do a single line text. So I can drag that. We can put this here and we can just say company. Maybe they're representing a specific company and we'll just say this is optional and we will not require this one. And lastly, we could do something simple like a multiple choices. And if we click here, we can say, how did you hear about us? And then you can put in your different options here. So word of mouth, advertisement, search engine, and maybe social media. So that's good for now. And now this is what your form will look like. If we come on the left-hand side, we can go under settings and we have general settings. And there's a submit button text here. So we could say, register me for the webinar and then notifications. So this is, you'll be notified by email when somebody signs up. So you can change the settings in here and the confirmation, you can now send a message to them. So the page will refresh. You could also create another page here. So I have videos on how to create thank you pages, and I'm gonna add that to the end of this video on how to create a thank you page on the end screen. So if you wanna watch that video as well, that might help you. And then you would just create that thank you page and select it here. So after they fill out this form, they would be redirected to that new page. All right, now that we finished this, let's just go ahead and click save. And we're gonna click the X here to close this out. And this will automatically load the form that we just created right here. So we're just going to remove some of this text here that's in the template. And let's just click the block setting here. And you can select a different form if you want. It's going to automatically select the one that is created if there's only one. Now there are some display options. So the form name, if you want to show that. So this was called webinar sign up. You can hide that. There was a description as well, but I'm going to hide that as well. So under the advanced tab, we have some basic topography and text colors. So obviously that color's not working too great. We could go black, but I think white would probably stand out a little bit better on this red background. And we can select this image here. Let's delete this and maybe let's do a quick search for an arrow. And this is just an idea. You do not have to do this. And maybe this one. And we could grab a headline and pull that over and say, register now. And we'll just change that to white. All right, so now it's not awful looking. I'd, again, I'd spend more time on this, but you get the idea here. So we have a custom form where we can now take some information and this will be sent to your email. You'll be notified when people sign up. We have a nice custom layout here. We imported it and we got a good head start. So now we have a page that looks good and we can now accept webinar registrations. Now we do have these buttons that don't really do anything. So one option would be to have them link down to this form specifically. So how do we do that? This is just gonna be a little pro tip I'm gonna show you. We can take the custom HTML block here and let's just put that right here on top of the form and click the block settings. And very carefully, we're gonna type in span and we're gonna go ID and this is two quotes here and we'll just call this register. And then we'll close this and then we'll just close this tag and we're not gonna put anything in here. So if I typed, you'll see some text here. We don't want anything in between here. So now what we can do is take this register word and if we come back up, we can select our button, click the cogwheel and there's a link here. So we can actually put a number sign and we can paste register here. So now when people click on this, it'll actually slide down the page and it'll take them to the section where that register ID is. And then you could do the same thing with this button as well. So let's go ahead and save this page and I'm gonna preview this. And now if we click this button, we can see that that automatically slides down to our form at the bottom. And we did that to the second button as well. So if we click here, you can see that that brings us back down. Now, if you chose to use the opt-in form, which we can see under advanced blocks, if you chose to use this instead of the WP forms, 
you can add in your information here, but you can also connect this to a third party. So if you go connect, we have email marketing services here. So if you have a favorite, you could go, for example, to constant contact, create an account with them and click connect here and connect new account. And they will provide you with an API key that you can paste right here. And if you're not sure how to get that, check their documentation or their support. It's very easy to get. You can give this connection an optional name and then click connect. So now when anybody enters their email or name in that opt-in form, it'll send that to your favorite email marketing service. As well, we have page settings here. So we can click and we can change the page title. These are the general settings. We also have SEO analytics scripts and custom domain. But here under general, we can change the page title, the URL, we can change the page status, or you can change the page status up here. This is what I use instead. You can show a seed prod link powered by seed prod link. And if you like, you can join the affiliate program to get a 20% commission and just paste your link in here. There's also an isolation mode that you can enable, and this will prevent conflicts with your theme or with other plugins. And under the SEO tab, we highly recommend all in one SEO for all your SEO needs. With analytics, we recommend Monster Insights. And if you need to paste any scripts for any reason into your header, body, or footer, you can do that under this tab. And lastly, for your custom domain, you can assign a domain, so mynewdomain.com, and we can map that to your landing page URL. So seedprod.local slash webinar would actually link to your specific domain by setting this up. So you can click and check the documentation to learn more on how to map your custom domain. All right, now that we're happy with our page, we can go ahead and save this. And let's go ahead and publish this page and put it live. Let's see it live. And now we can see our header, our colors have updated. We have a countdown. We have a reserve my seat. We have all the information that we would have updated. We have a picture that we updated, all of our speakers, a video, we have a register now section. And again, we just changed that to the opt-in form, but that does work here. Again, we changed that little secret pro tip here with the anchor links so that that'll slide down to your registration form nice and quickly and easily. So you don't have to leave the page. I hope this video helped you understand how to create a webinar registration page using SeedProd and our professionally designed templates. Now that you have a registration page, it might be a great idea to create a custom thank you page to display after a visitor submits their email. Check out this video I made on how to create a thank you page in WordPress. It will walk you through step-by-step -step how to use SeedProd to create great looking thank you pages so you can try and upsell a visitor on more offers or direct them to other products or services. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.